Fit for Life Radio. Gary and Will here with Coastal Strength and Fitness. What's up? This week we're going to be previewing and going over the new six-week phase with our program at the gym and sharing a tip, tidbit. Just one. <laughs> kind of goes in line with tipster starting a new program. Good mindset. We're going to be talking about your intensity, that all or nothing uh, mindset that a lot of people have. <clears throat> and a lot of people think that the best approach to fitness is to go as hard as possible, as much as possible, every time. Go hard or go home. Go hard or go home. And the, if we do that, we will get better results, better fitness. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It literally will lead to burnout sooner, injuries sooner, uh, and actually just, yeah, worse um, progression. And generally hitting a point where... Mm -hmm. You just don't enjoy it too. Yeah. It's way easier to hit that when you're burnt out and you're mm -hmm. just like, I don't even want to, I don't enjoy this anymore. Yeah. Cause you have to realize when we exercise, we are causing and forcing an adaption, right? So when we're doing the, the exercise, the effort, we're giving the effort, um, think of it like you're digging the hole, right? Or if you have like a, you're looking at a whiteboard and there's a line drawn across, you're now drawing a line under that hole and say that line drawn across is your current fitness level, your current strength, whatever, you know, whatever specific measurement, uh, or say your overall fitness. And we have that little dip and then our body has to recover, rebuild, um, do its, its thing. And then it, if we do that right, that little now the our squiggly line going across actually goes above what that baseline was, and we can, and we kind of now have set a new baseline. We've improved our fitness, right? And this could be your strength. This could be your cardiovascular fitness, your VO two, um, and then then we work out again, and it goes down a little, and then we recover, and it, go, and it goes up, and slowly we we improve, right? But if you say dig that hole and you impede the recovery and then you go, oh, I'm going to go even harder tomorrow. Right. Like, um, it, it didn't get to come back up yet. Yeah. And now you're, you're actually just digging a deeper hole. And then that's where now we're not recovering. So then, you know, things like your joints, your ligaments, your muscles, um, that's when they become more susceptible to damage and injury. Right. Um, so literally by, so the solution is you have to manage you have to vary intensities and and efforts and what you're doing and have rest days and that is how you you kind of overall in the long term improve your fitness so how do you do that right well for one like the simplest way is you hire a coach they'll do <laughs> you know? it for you now unfortunately you can also hire coaches who just smash you into the ground every time yeah. because they, because they know that's what you think you need. So they're just like, let me entertain them with, with that. And then make them work hard and feel like they did a lot, mm -hmm. but it's actually literally not the way to go. Um, unless the only thing you care about is just feeling completely just smashed. getting stomped. Yeah. <sighs> so, you know, the way we do it at our gym is we, very intensities and, and um, efforts. So, you know, in general, we'll have strength days um, with little, so you're obviously pushing your capabilities with moving weight again, you know, moving resistance, and that challenges your muscular system, your uh, joints, ligaments, all that. And then a certain amount of volume, certain amount of, so exercises so we know like we're not going to have five set you know five leg exercises and if we did and we've done this in the past so say that's a leg day well then you wouldn't maybe have a day like that again for a week so, yeah so it's like can, a once a week thing so when your you volume's out high yeah uh but the way we do it now is full body so you'll touch on everything maybe one or two for each muscle group and then you'll be able to hit it again in a day or two but yeah the recovery is um, so much easier when you have that that low volume yeah but then you're getting it 
three times a week. Mm -hmm. And that adds up. It allows you to recover, but adds up very well over time. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that happens is then you have cardio, right? And when you challenge your cardiovascular system with, and with high intensities, get your heart rate up real high, that also causes different types, of, different types of fatigue in your body in different systems. And if you're always trying to do that every day, that's where you notice a lot of times you, you may notice, oh, you started working out and you're training hard like that, especially doing high-intensity cardio all the time, and then you get sick pretty soon. Well, that's because your immune system, you know, gets affected and, and there's so many downstream effects. And so you want to manage that. And even elite athletes, so these are people who literally their only priority is improving their performance. 80% of the cardio they do is low intensity. Only in 20% is high intensity. So 80% of the time, say if they're doing 10 hours a week, 80% 80% of the time, they're just in zone two, zone one, which is like slightly above a brisk walk, right? Or a brisk walk for some, you know, it's like a, a heart rate where you can talk just fine, manageable, right? So in, that's because it's a lot to recover from it when, is. when you push those high intensities. So for us, we'll have um, on strength days, sometimes little finishers, but literally two to four minutes. Right? Yeah, they're they're super short. So it's just maybe you can just get your heart rate up a little, get that get a little sweat going. People like to feel that. It's entertaining. It's but. a good way to end a workout as a group. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they're they're good and they're not have to break the bank. Mm-hmm. It's not like we're doing 15, 20, 25 minutes of this high intensity activity yep. on a day. It's four minutes. And then Thursdays and Saturdays, we kind of have dedicated cardio days where you're going to be hitting these higher heart rate ranges, so high-intensity interval training essentially, and for sustained time for like 30, 40 minutes. Um, So that's only two days a week. That's for for a reason, for a purpose. And then sometimes Fridays and Tuesdays, we'll mix in some circuits or like strength-type circuits, which ultimately end up being like a zone two. Yeah, they're kind of a zone two. Yeah, you're, you're... Basically, it's a way just to be moving (laughs) that's um, more entertaining for most people than just like a bike or a treadmill. Um, It also can give you practice with with the movements and lifts and exercises. But yeah, essentially, we're either hitting strength work, zone two work, or high intensity work, right? And to train kind of all the fitness variables, but it's strategically set up and balanced throughout the week. Right. And if you just go in and you're just trying to do high intensity work every time you go in the gym again, or you're just going in and you lift as much as you can uh, with every exercise, with, with a ton of sets every day, every, every day, you're, it's just it'll add up. Yeah, it's not the way to go. That's something we have to coach people on, too, is like knowing when to take a rest day mm-hmm. or to take a day like your body will tell you to take a day and just. You know, you're working at 75% that day. Yep. Like, it's cool. It's fine. It's better in the long run, especially when your body's giving you those signals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you feel, like, run down and beat up and you're like, man, I feel a lot weaker today. Yeah. Well, take the hint. Yep. And just don't don't push it. Yeah. It's cool. And realize this is somewhat vague and overarching, but... And yeah, sometimes you have those days you have to auto regulate your intensity, even what you had planned, which even if that was smartly planned, you still may have to auto regulate. And a good way to think about it. So with like heart rate cardio, 60 to 70 percent is what's considered zone two, like Mm -hmm. lower intensity. So obviously with your cardio, just think about giving like 60, 70 percent. And then maybe with even strength stuff, like if you have to auto regulate, just do 70 percent of what you would have normally lifted. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, You still get benefits of like coordination and sticking with the habit, going through the motions like there is still lots of value value in that. Excuse me, especially for for um, general population, general fitness. Uh, So don't underestimate that, because at the end of the day, the goal for everyone in that population of general fitness, general population is consistency over time. Like that's the, that, that's, that's, it. That's, that's the answer. You got to get that down. So it's okay to auto regulate your effort. Make sure you have a smart program. Most people are better off hiring a coach, whether that's a gym like coastal strength and fitness that is a coaching program built in personal trainer. Um, even you can, um, and we, we have one on train heroic. We have a program where people yeah, online stuff, 
online. Like they kind of write the program and you just go to the gym, like an open gym type gym and do, do, do your thing. But you have it all planned out. And you have access to. So, yeah, yeah. it's, you yeah. know, the, the people who had the most success that I, I've noticed at the gym and uh, like long term, the, their fitness is great. They've gotten strong cardiovascularly. They're good. Like they know when they feel off and they or, me, like yeah. that day they're like, all right, well, I'm just I'm not yeah. feeling it today. And it's not a mental just like, oh, I don't want to do this. It's I know that I should probably take a step back. Mm -hmm. And those people always have the best success because they're not getting injured. Yep. Right. They're staying fresh on you know, for the most time and recognizing when they don't. And that's very important, you know, and it's a trend. Like we see it with a lot of people that just like, we'll say, kill it at our gym that are strong. Mm -hmm. um, they're not going beast mode every day. Yep. They have days where they'll come in and like, Hey, I'm going to just take a step back on all my weights and that's fine. Yep. So just realize that. Yeah. And a general rule of thumb is the more often, the more frequent you train, the more your training needs to be at a lower intensity. You know, um, the, the, the unfortunate thing is most people, who, especially when they start, they're gung ho. They want to train all the time and as hard as possible. And it should be the opposite. OK, if you're going to go do something five, six, seven days a week, um, it can't be at, at a red line mm -hmm. every time. Yeah. You know, now, if you only want to work out two days a week, then, yeah, make it crank count. it up, you know, hit hit that one set to failure with all your lifts and and hit that 15 minute high intensity interval. Um, yeah, because that's, all, you know, the rest of the time is rest time because you're not doing nothing. Um, yeah, then then you can train like that. But it, then now you're going to start adding a bunch more days. You got to manage it. And a lot of that's going to be uh, lower intensity stuff, you know, so. That's that. Yeah. So, Watch your intensities. So keep that in mind. So here we are coming up the end. So our programming, maybe one time we'll go over the full, like we have like, like the year macro stuff, the year, the macro yearly plan. And then it breaks down into like quarterly and then into getting down into the, you know, micro stuff. So essentially this is part three. So the last six week phase of a bigger quarterly mm -hmm. our summer summer program right so summer shred part three and coming off of this last six weeks so there's some changes will be some of the specific exercises that we keep in every week to track some of them will will stay as you know into this third phase and then and then next phase is where there'll be kind of a complete change yeah, right there'll be a lot there'll be a, a lot, lot of change, a lot of changes actually with, yeah um so this will be almost kind of, everything will be changing next six yeah, weeks yeah to that bigger kind of quarterly yeah uh phase that we do so in this one some of the changes will be uh so the format will be the same so we have the three full body strength days monday wednesday friday tuesday's full body hybrid so a little bit of resistance a little bit of cardio um and Friday, yeah, Friday strength day, and yeah. then Saturday SmackDown. And then Thursdays are our cardio, cardio dedicated day. cardio day. Now, within those days, um, some differences. So you want to go over the... We can hit the highlights on, on the, all the days if you the, want. The main exercises. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So so Mondays, um, you know, we're shifting. We had been doing hip thrusts for a while. We'll be doing a, a Bulgarian deadlift. So if anybody hasn't done that, it's more of a... Uh, Ooh. <laughs> it's a, you know, a, essentially a stagger stance deadlift, but you're elevating your rear foot, right? Like a Bulgarian split squat, but I promise not as um, terrible. So those, it's just a really good single leg hinge. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to continue our L sits. Those have been, man, really good for like, you know, shoulder stability, but like hip flexor work, just holding that position has mm -hmm. been good for people. It's been solid. So we're going to keep doing L sits. On Mondays, let's fast forward to Wednesday, landmine squat. Mm -hmm. Something we haven't done in a, a little while, um, but I do love them. I, I like being able to load in that front rack by having it be a little stable yeah. with that bar. And let's talk about, so with the landmine squat, one of the unique things is it's kind of like changes the resistance profile. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's because of the arc of the bars you squat, it's like a little heavier at the bottom. Yep. Right. And then it's like easy, 
like lighter at the t- as you come up to the squat, it kind of gets lighter. Um, Cause so, yeah, you're coming to the top part of that that yeah. lever. So, that so as is, you get past a certain point, it's going to get a lot easier. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of changes the emphasis a little bit. Um, so I th- what is that? An ascending resistance profile, if it's or descending. Uh, if it's getting harder as you go down, go down, it's ascending. I believe I can't remember which one's which because I feel like I have them backwards. Yeah, I know, and it doesn't really where matter. the resistance is high, but I can't remember what the. Uh, but yeah. well, let's explain what it would do. So if you have a squat pattern and it's easier at the bottom and gets harder as you press up, that's going to put a little more emphasis on your quads, uh, and it makes it easier at the bottom, which is your which is uh, your adductors. The inner part of your thighs kind of mm-hmm. have to work a, a really hard down there, um, and and glutes a little bit. So yeah, that's usually what's taking you out of the hole is glutes and yeah. adductors are doing a lot. Now on this one, it's going to be harder at the bottom and easier at the top. So it's going to be a little less on the quads, and it's going to ask more of your adductors and glutes. So if anyone's like, "Why am I sore here?" Mm-hmm. That's why. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go on next. Bench press. I mean, that's a fan favorite. Yeah. Last phase, I think the did did we have that in there every yeah. week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing bench press. This will yeah. be our. Um, we also had incline, but yeah, we did a, like a high, very high incline mm-hmm. and a little bit of a higher rep on Mondays, and yeah. that's that's gone. So yeah, this will be um, last six weeks of this bench press, and that's one that like people are very consistent on, you know, pushing and, and doing yeah. enough on, and I think it's. I mean, it's just fun for everybody. So we're, we're usually going to have some type of variation mm-hmm. for that. Fridays, front foot elevated split squat. So just a split squat with your foot elevated on a plate. It's our second six weeks of that. Um, and then it'll be a full full switch out on that exercise as well. Um, and then dumbbell snatches, which are, you know, an explosive movement. And I think that sometimes explosiveness or power gets... People wonder, like, why do I even need to do that? Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to note, like, those higher threshold fibers. That, so there's certain muscle fibers that only get activated to do those things. Explosive movements. And if we don't use them, we, we lose, lose them. them, right? So it's think of it more, and if people have trouble connecting the dots with, like, explosive and power, it essentially means, like, speed is kind of the same thing. So yeah. you're, you're trying to move, the, move as fast as possible, move... Uh, your muscle through that that speed progression to activate those fibers yeah. and that's a benefit especially as we age yeah and it, it, just a good example is when you go to pick something up and put it on the counter or mm-hmm. a truck bed something heavy like you're using your power to mm-hmm. do that so like it is very important it's not arbitrary um, but we're going to be working on those and we'll we're going to descend the reps kind of as we go you know we'll start and let everybody get their form you know, honed in and feel good about them. And then we'll go a little bit lower with the reps on yeah. those. So those will be pretty fun yeah. to work on. So again, you'll notice those main lifts are a lot of times like performance type lifts, no- normally like pushing stuff actually. So it's like dumbbell press and squats, front foot uh, split squats, landmine squats, um, deadlift, which in a way it's like you're pushing off the ground. Um, People don't get as hyped up for uh, see the cable rows. Yeah, but then so but then think of that stuff like that's the the balance, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why we always do them. And then you'll notice like a lot of times the the ones we're tracking all that uh, the the fun list for a lot, and that's why it's like that's why you need a coach because most people just go and these guys are and that's all they're doing for this. They're just gonna do bench press and debt, and then they don't do any pulling stuff yeah. and then you get, you can get imbalances. And so of course, then all this in those strength days is balanced with, um, seated leg curls, lap pull downs, rows, mm-hmm. um, things like that. Right. Yeah. So we're usually going to do like three or, I mean, really three or four days a week we're, we're pulling in some regard, whether mm-hmm. it's your, you know, vertical stuff or rows or upper back. I mean, we do, mm-hmm. we make sure everything's in there. And then another change is on Thursdays. So, the cardio day progressing towards this phase, longer intervals. Yeah. So we'd be looking at 60 minute intervals, right? Uh, so then, you know, when you get 60 second or yeah, 60 minute interval, <laughs> <laughs> one, so, just one interval, um, 60 second intervals, you know, and ultimately it actually, well, it really depends if, if you, if you're 
you can put like it depends on your fitness levels. Yes. And that, that's what's great about even though it's group training, there's just ways based on where your fitness level is. Like one workout may can be different for for one person than it is for another. Right. So if you're new, like 60 seconds, you're not going to be able to maintain like your highest level of effort for no. that long. But the reality, so you're going to have to use a lower intensity to make it to 60 minutes. But so it, it, it may end up, you know, being like a zone two workout, but you're, you're moving and getting through it, which is good because it's important to build that base. Like yeah. a, the base of all kind of cardiovascular fitness is on that zone two base right now. Say you've been coming a while and, and especially if you've been doing the program and coming on the third, on the Thursdays, you've maybe been doing the 20 second intervals, the 40 second intervals, the 30 second intervals. And so now in, in pushing at a higher intensity and if, if you want, if you're ready, then you try to maintain that intensity for now in the 60 seconds. Um, yeah, you're going to be, cr- you're going to be cranking, it's gonna right? Be um, challenging. So there's kind of two ways to look at that, or you can just, ch- Hey, like, you know what? 60 seconds. I am going to bring down my intensity so that I can main, maybe maintain a certain intensity, which would be a lower intensity, but for the entire 60 seconds and for all the rounds. Yeah. Um, and again, then that's going to put you in different zones, but that's it's still very beneficial. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that will be the shift for this phase on Thursdays, the longer intervals. Um, also with longer intervals means that, Hey, you got to maintain these movements for longer. Um, but again, normally on those days, that's why we do cyclical type stuff that, yeah. that, that has like n- no technical component. Yeah, It's usually like lower skill stuff. The, the machines, bike, rower, skier, sled. Yep. Yeah. I mean, things that are, are, are ru- like, we'll say roughly foolproof, mm-hmm. you know, we're not doing, um, you know, a dumbbell snatch for 60 seconds or yep. anything like that. It's generally going to be something that is, um, and easier. Just, and just so people know, like that's for a reason, right? That's yeah. how, like, we understand like a lot of people love variety and would love for nothing to ever be the same ever again. But the reality is like, there's not that much stuff. And yeah, you start, you have to, with good programming, you're weighing risk reward, right? And especially our main client base is 40 and over and, it's like, and also doesn't have the time to be in the gym eight hours a week to practice their skills and mobility. Yeah. And then, then you're in this super fatigued state and and you have to do a technical exercise. As we all know, like once you get super fatigued, your brain, your brain gets kind of that washed out feeling and you're trying trying to get through it. And you're trying to hold a position that maybe you can't hold. Yeah. You can't keep the exercise safe. So then if imagine if you have to do some technical exercise and you're gasping for air. And so now like the risk component has just it's just skyrocketed and it's like, and, but we're just trying to do some cardio, right? What's if you can get the same adaptions with these exercises, why take on the risk? And that's the thing. Oh, because it's a little more fun. Well, it's like, if you, Dan, it's Dan at some not point fun. you have a coach where it's like, yeah, but then you blow out your shoulder. Now you can't do anything. Um, we that's, that's irresponsible. Yeah. So, and and it, it, I think a lot of that is like, oh, that won't happen to me, mm-hmm. you know, and until you've been through it, it's hard to for some people to wrap yeah. their brain around like, oh, if I get injured, I am going to be out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be modifying stuff for three months or longer or I'm going to have to have surgery. Like when you've been through it, it's way easier to rationalize it when you haven't. It's a little harder, but you do need to listen to yep. the expert that is telling you, like, this is why we do what we do. Yep. And then Tuesday, uh, you want to go over. So this will. I don't know if we have this every week, but in week one, um, so is, so yeah. Tuesdays, we got the strength ha- is the hybrid day. So it's a couple yeah, yeah, yeah. couple strength stations. So but then strength we're stations. Have then we e- have that imam. Imam. Yeah, we have an imam, and we do that routinely. But week two is where we're actually going to do a strength imam mm-hmm. this time. So I don't want a little preview, right? We'll probably go over it, um, but a, a little twist on like a strength circuit. So that'll be something fun upcoming, and we'll try it out. Um, it's not set in stone that we're going to do it forever. Um, but that'll be at yeah, the second week. We'll do, you know, an e- strength imam with four strength exercises, and then we'll do a, a, a nice structured circuit of like actual cardio to kind of finish the day off. Mm-hmm. So that's what that looks like. So there you go. Yep. And a little, little preview next six weeks to keep, uh, my fans of this happy. We are going to do some strength circuits. So 
keep talking your, about keep after, your eyes peeled after the six weeks into the, going into the fall. Yeah, yeah just to yeah, just to dangle that little pumpkin spice for everybody. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there you have it. There's this week. Hit us up at the gym or, or on socials, comments, questions, that kind of stuff, and we'll be back next week. Yep. See you.